Okay, so in previous videos and blog posts, we've looked at how you are going to be setting up Microsoft Bookings. So we've got the business information set up, the services, we've looked at the staff members and made sure they're on there. We've added the booking page. That's awesome. So now let's have a look and see what the experience will be for a customer when they actually go ahead and book something and also for the staff member that has um, had this booking assigned to them. All right, so we are on our Microsoft Bookings um, app area and I'm going to go to the booking page section and I'm going to go ahead and open up the published page. So we're going to walk through this as if we were a customer that is going through and actually setting this up and or picking a date and we'll go with the initial free consultation for 15 minutes. And we can see here that we can select the staff member. We can see based on availability pulling through from someone's Outlook calendar that Tom is not available for this specific day. So I can go ahead and I can change it to somebody else. Um, I'm going to change it to Megan V. Walker and I'm going to go ahead and pick the date that I want. And then based on the date, I can see all of the times available. So let's say we want 1030. So we've picked that and it's telling us that we selected the 11th of August at 10.30 with Megan V. Walker. So I'm going to go ahead and put in my information so that we can then have a, a, an email that's a confirmation email sent to this person. And there's the phone number. And then we've got a custom question. So let's just go with what we want to actually talk about on the call. Then what we've got is we've got our... Um, our statement that we've put in that's saying, okay, well, what is it that somebody's actually agreeing to when they go ahead and submit this? So again, that's the one of the custom fields for the booking page. So yes, I agree to that and I'm going to go ahead and book it. All right, so that is now being submitted through. So let's just give that a moment. All right, so now we see this notification. Thank you for booking with us. You'll get a confirmation message in your in your email box soon. So let's go ahead and click OK. Now what we're seeing is the kind of final reminder of this is what you've just booked. So the date and the time, if there's a location, who it is that you've booked with. And then we've also got these options where I could actually reschedule immediately or I could cancel it or I could go ahead and add in an additional new booking if I wanted to. All right, so let's go ahead and look at some of the emails that have been generated for that. So the first thing is if I go into the inbox for um, Megan, uh, sorry, for Jane Doe, what I've got is I've got two different emails that have come through and I'll, I'll show you why that is the case. So first of all, if we click on the initial free consultation. Now, what this one is, if we go back into the uh, bookings area, there we go. So if we look at the email notifications, if you had watched the video where I talked about setting up the booking page, you'll know that I said that we've got the option to send this and that to me it's a little bit pointless. So I wanted you to see what it would look like so you know exactly what that setting is going to do if you have it turned on and what your customer would receive. So we've got send a meeting invite to the customer in addition to the confirmation email. So your confirmation email is going to go out anyway. This is then my meeting invite. So, okay, there's some information. I've set this up as a Teams meeting, so we've got the link in there. If I go back to the inbox, this is the confirmation email that goes out by default, and it has a booking.ics. It's got an ICS file on there that I could download. And also, depending on the um, email provider that somebody has, or the client that they're using, we can see here that with Gmail, it says, okay, well, I can add this to my calendar. So for me, this setting here, I feel is a little bit pointless. If you turn it on, essentially you're sending two emails to your customer for the same thing. So just keep that in mind. So this is the standard one that will go out. So we can see here, we've got information. We've got, we're confirming this booking. You have your consultation with this person at this date and time this location if there was one, and then also the link to join the Teams meeting if you've set it up and said that it's a virtual online meeting. Then I've got the option if I want to, to manage the booking. And if I click on that, I get taken to that same page where I can reschedule or I could cancel it. Now, if I click on reschedule, it's 
stored the information that I provided previously, but instead I can say, oh, actually 10.30, I forgot, I can't do that. I'm going to go for the afternoon and I'm going to change it to 3.30. And then we agree to the terms or acknowledge them and then we update the booking. So pretty easy for them to go ahead and reschedule um, and also to cancel as well. Okay, so now if I go into the um, mailbox for Megan V. Walker associated with this bookings, I can see there, oh, actually, we just got the updated one. That's awesome. So I can see I've got my new booking notification and I can see that this has been booked and it's essentially the same thing that Jane Doe has received as well. But I know that's come through to me and that's great. We can see now this one has been updated. So again, I'm going to get that notification because I am the employee or the staff member that has been assigned to that specific booking. So I can see that that's been updated and I get that notification immediately. So that's really the, the process that will, um, will occur or will be followed. Um, so it's a good idea to, to know what happens with that. Now, if I go into the calendar area in bookings and oh, what date did I pick I cannot remember uh, 11th of August so if I go to the 11th of August we can see there is that consultation that's been booked for Megan Walker I can go ahead and I can open it and look and look at more information and we can see all of the the options there we can see the customer's information um, I could edit the customer's details if I wanted to um, all within the bookings area. So pretty straightforward, pretty easy. Um, just keep in mind, again, the thing that probably for me is a bit pointless to have turned on is to also send a meeting invite to the customer as well, because like I said, for the most part, they should be able to just download that booking.ics file and then that is used to add to their calendar. So hopefully this was helpful. Good idea to know what the experiences are going to be for both your customers and your staff members when you're using Microsoft Bookings. Hi, I'm Megan Walker. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video and that you learned something from it. If you don't want to miss out on any other content, you can go ahead and click on my face below to subscribe. And if you want to watch the next video, you can do that by clicking over here and go ahead and get started. Thanks again.